Hello and welcome to About Anything. Today I would like to talk about the rules of football. Over the last week, the rules of football have come into question. So I got to thinking, if I could change some rules in football, what would they be? This actually kind of was a topic on the Kelsey Brothers podcast recently in which they talked about one rule that they would like to remove or add. So I decided, what would I want to change? Now, granted, this is probably something the NFL can't do, but maybe if, if a new league was starting up, uh, kind of like the XFL or the USFL, maybe these are rules they should have in the game instead. So some of these are pretty radical. Um, so I don't expect you to really agree with every one of these rules. I'm guaranteeing not all of them will, but uh, hopefully some of them will. So I, I took some time and looked through some notes, and this is what I came up with. The first change I would make, and I'm going to start with the most radical change of all, time of the game. Right now, as we all know, we play 60-minute games with four 15-minute quarters. We all know when the clock runs. But that just doesn't make sense to me. Why is this the only sport in which the ball is not in action, or the puck, the clock is still running? It just doesn't make sense. So, my new rules are... The clock only runs while the ball is in play. So now you're thinking, well, geez, we're going to be here for all day if we're playing 60-minute games and the clock is only running when the ball is in play. Of course not. We figured there's about six to eight seconds per play in a game. And it's about 135 plays per game. Doing the math out, kind of rounding off some things, I come up with 15-minute games. Yep, four, three, and a half-minute quarters. The number of plays in the game will still be the same. There will be no out-of-bounds questions. Many of you probably don't know that if a receiver goes out-of-bounds, he has to be going forward for the clock to stop. Sometimes he's going backwards and the clock doesn't stop and everybody gets all mad because the clock didn't stop. Well, this ends that. This is also going to end the defense late in games just manning the sidelines. Now the whole middle of the field is wide open because the clock's going to stop. We'll have no injury timeouts at the end because the clock's already stopped, so it doesn't make a difference. We'll get rid of the stupid rule of the 10-second runoff for a penalty at the end of the game because, again, the clock's not running. And a flag is thrown. It's an illegal procedure against the Jets, so this will move it back five yards. Number 15 was not set. Full start. Offense number 15. Results in a 10 second runoff. Yeah, that's it. Game okay. over. Jets win in a frantic. We'll get rid of the really stupid rule of the 10 second runoff for a video review in the last two minutes on which the referees screwed up, but they decide they need to look at it. So it's going to cost the team 10 seconds. Yep. Let's bring in our rules analyst, with, working with Mike Pereira, Dean Blandino. Go back to a running clock, and we have a 10-second runoff. So by rule, the game is over. One of the biggest things that I thought about with this should limit, again, limit, because it could still happen, the most boringest play in sports, the kneel down. I find this terrible way to end the game. So now with the clock stopping... At the end of each play, kneel downs very much won't exist. Also, to get rid of the second most stupid play in sports, the spike, the quarterback spike to stop the clock. We won't need these with the clock being stopped. Some other things I saw that could benefit from not having a running clock. We won't have defensive linemen laying on the receiver or the bark ball carrier so they can't get up during the two-minute drill. There will be no game time being wasted with people just standing around. So yes, there'll still be a 35-second play clock, but that will be for every down. Teams won't get all day to think about a play. As for timeouts, well, you really won't need them too much, so we're going to limit them to one per half, and they'll mostly be used for either strategy or to save on a 35-second delay of game penalty. One last thing with time, we'll get rid of the two-minute warning. Well, obviously, 
it won't be a two minute warning. It'll be like a 40 second warning. But what's the purpose of the two minute warning anyway? Who's being warned of what? Is this really just for TV or does this go back to the times when the clocks weren't in the stadium and no one knew how much time was actually left in the game? What really is the point of the two minute warning? So those are things I would change based on time. Next topic will be the defensive penalties. In my world, there'll be no automatic first downs except for personal fouls. The automatic first down for a five-yard legal contact way down the field is just too harsh. The penalties on the defense are just too harsh for, for the violation. So again, other than personal fouls such as roughing the kicker, roughing the roughing the quarterback, uh, a late hit out of bounds, or you know unnecessary roughness after a play, basically violent conduct. On a personal fail such as roughing, yes, it will be an automatic first down, but in my world, the penalty is either going to be 15 yards or it gets moved, the ball gets moved to the first down marker, whichever is greater. So if you have a rough in the quarterback and it's less than 15 yards to gain, you get 15 yards. But if it's third and 20 and a team roughs the quarterback, basically they get 20 yards because the ball goes to the first down marker. Pass interferences will still be a spot foul, but you'll also get five yards added to the end of the play. If this is enough for a first down, so be it. Also, let's go back, I don't know what, 10 years to the old rough in the quarterback rules where only late hits and blows to the head were penalties, not just tackling too hard. You gotta get rid of that. So, I know some people are thinking, if we don't have the automatic first down, the defensive teams are just going to create penalties willy-nilly. Well, they may, but there's some other things we can do. For one, if there are two or more penalties on the defense, apply them all. Why does one get to get off for free? On the offense side of the ball, there's some offensive penalties that I would change. For one, a stiff arm by the offense to the face of the defense should be a penalty. Don't understand if a defense can't do it, why can't an offense? doesn't make sense. But one of my biggest change is there should be a third option for the defensive team on a penalty enforcement of an offensive penalty. Obviously, we'll have to take, take the yardage and give the offense the play again. We also have declined a penalty if there's like a turnover or tackle for loss but I'm coming up with a third option the third option is the defensive team makes the offensive team lose a down meaning the ball goes back to the original line of scrimmage new down just like just like the play was a waste so where is this going to come important well let's just say it's third and three and the offense completes a pass over the middle for five yards for a potential first down. But wait, there's holding. So right now, the defensive team's only choices are to decline the penalty, which would give them a first down, which makes no sense, or move the offense back 10 yards for and give them third down again, setting up a third and 13. It just doesn't make sense that the offense gets to redo their play that they created a foul on. So it doesn't make sense. So I would think the defensive team could choose another option. Nope, play just gets canceled out. So if it was third and three or whatever I said, well, now it just becomes fourth and three. Now take that one step further. Can you imagine that happening on fourth down or say a field goal attempt and there's a hold on a field goal attempt? Game changer. Defensive team could just cancel the play. As far as offsetting penalties, as much as I think this rule is weird that if there's a 10-yard penalty on one team and a 5-yard penalty on the other side, that it's just not a net of 5 yards on the one team. But it gets too complicated with like, if you have the personal fouls and the little offsides. So unfortunately, as much as I would love to change this rule, I have to think it needs to stay the same. Grocery list here. Personal foul, number two of the, re of the receiving team blocking while out of bounds. 
Holby, <laughs> number 18 Come on, Pete. of their kicking team. With all that, it's an offset. Uh -oh. As far as change of possession fouls, like on a return or a punt return, nothing really can get changed on that because there's no play to take away or to give back. Next thing we're changing is the challenges. Challenges will still be two a game, plus if they're both successful, you get an extra one. The biggest change I would like to see is that coaches only have 35 seconds to throw their flag. No extra time will be granted due to an injury and they go to a commercial. No extra time will be granted if they have an administrative error and they have to reset the clock for some other reason. No extra time will be given if you call a timeout. This is very similar to baseball. When a play happens at second base, baseball, they only have, what, 15 seconds to make the call. So football, you only get 35 seconds. There's no extra time for extraneous reasons. Another thought I was even thinking about was no video review in the coach's box. I know this one's crazy. Coaches should be able to trust their own eyes or their players that are on the field to help them determine if a play needs to be challenged. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Scratch that one. And the reason I'm going to scratch that one is just because I still want the replays to be shown in the stadium for the paying fans. I don't want to take anything away from the paying fans from enjoying the game. So we all know if we did this, the home team won't show replays of calls against them and vice versa. So, you know what? Scratch that one. Other rules we want, we're going to change in this new league. Fumble out of bounds by the offense goes back to the offense at the one. Now, apparently, if I'm not as read, the XFL and the USFL actually have made this change for the upcoming seasons. Another controversial one, entire ball must be completely over the goal line, just like in hockey. Not just a tip breaking the plane, the entire ball has to be over. So yes, in theory, you could have a ball spotted half in and half out of the end zone, and we'll call that the zero yard line. The dreaded catch rule, two feet inbounds with the control, but then falling, drops the ball hitting the ground, should still, should be a catch. Touchdowns, touchdowns must be entered within the pylon. None of this diving around the pylon. You have to go within the pylon. Another radical one, 60 yard field goals should be worth five points. I know you're thinking, why? Well, wait, no one liked the three point shot when that came into basketball either. And that's surely not going away. So 60 yards, there's not many of them, but at least it gives a team some sort of last second shot late in the game. And I know our Eagles fans are not going to like this one. Let's get rid of pushing players. Obviously, no one could stop the Eagles on their fourth and one, third and one quarterback sneaks and pushing players. I didn't like it. I also don't like it when the running back is held up and then here comes a big offensive lineman and pushes them for three or four more yards. No, we can get rid of pushing the players. One last thing is a broadcasting idea. I want to mic up the refs and let us at home, not in the stadium because that would just cause controversy, let us at home hear their conversation in real time. I want to hear what their thought process was when they pick up a flag. So let us hear it in real time. Obviously, we all know TV is on delay anyway, so they can bleep out whatever they have to. But we at home should be able to hear their conversation in real time so we know what they're thinking and why they made rule, why they made decisions. Maybe if they tell us why or how they came up to that decision, the fans won't be as upset about the decision. So I know a lot of these rules are radical, big changes, and well, maybe even somewhat crazy. And I don't expect anybody to really go down the list and say they like every single one on this list, but I'm sure there is something or a few somethings on here that you like. So please, if you have any more rule th thoughts that you think should be changed uh, that I missed, or do you have any more s examples of what not having a running clock will do to the game, please let us know in the comments. So again, 
this is about anything, please like and subscribe.